Sequential Circuits was founded back in 1974 by Dave Smith in San Francisco. Hi, Dave here. Dave Smith had a background as a performing musician and owned one of the 300 Mini Moog Model Ds combined with a degree in electrical engineering from UC Berkeley. He started off by making sequencers for Moog and ARP synths because he felt his Mini Moog Model D could use one and he took it upon himself to produce this sequencer. This is how his sequential programmer 600 came to life. More more sequencers followed after this, as there was a large demand for sequencers at the time since this was a pretty rare feature on synthesizers, and at this time Dave Smith had a full-time job working on microprocessors, which was basically brand new technology in the mid-70s. He came up with an idea. What if I combine microprocessors with synthesizer chips to create a programmable synthesizer? He didn't move forward with realizing the idea because he figured that Moog or ARP would design an instrument like this first, but when that wasn't the case, in early 1977, he quit his full-time job to start designing the famous and legendary Sequential Circuits Prophet 5, Hi. Hi. Dave, Dave, Dave. the first fully programmable polyphonic synthesizer. Dave designed the synthesizer along with his partner John Bowen, who first started out as a Moog clinician in 1973. During this time, there were a few polysynths on the market. Moog designed a polymog, ARP was at the time still playing with different types of string synthesis, and Yamaha's CS80 was taking the lead on polyphonic synthesizers. But even the CS80, for instance, which had several presets and allowed you to store four partials, still didn't hit the spot. So when drafting up the original design, Dave Smith and John Bowen conceived this synth while designing and building a mini Moog programmer and an early digital sequencer. Legend says that it was by luck that they hit upon a specification that every keyboard player would soon crave, a five octave keyboard, polyphony, powerful modulation section, memories that stored every parameter and a punchy sound similar to the mini Moog itself. At the time, it was called the Prophet 10 and sounded exactly like the Rev 1 Prophet 5, the only difference being that you could play 10 notes at a time. Unfortunately, it was unreliable as it had a tendency to overheat within its case. And what happens when synthesizers, when they get hot, they drift out of tune and it's a downhill right from there. So what was the solution? Literally cut the electronics in half and there you have it, the Prophet 5. You might be wondering where the Prophet part came from though. It said that it was Rick Wakeman's suggestion to Dave Smith, who I consider a synth king, literally, because it is his brain that created the genius that is the myths and legends of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> and he performed that album live by adding ice skaters and calling it King Arthur on Ice. King Arthur! On ice, my, my dude. Whoso pulleth out the sword of stone and anvil is the true born king of Britain. I'm definitely cutting that out. Seriously, could you get any more proggy than that? Judging from Wakeman's discography, it seems that he has always been into mythical, mystical, and mysterious things, so the word prophet seems to fit in really well. And he was also a user of the previously mentioned sequencers. Even though the early Prophet 5s were stripped out versions of these failed Prophet 10s, they still remained somewhat unreliable, requiring further modifications. Either way, they were awesome instruments that sounded incredible and sequential managed to create a serious following around these things, rightfully so. The Prophet 5 included 61 keys, two VCOs per voice with sawtooth pulse and triangle waves, pitch and modulation wheels, oscillator sync, two envelopes, LFO, four pull low fast resonant filters, and the 40 patches. At the time, it sold for around $4,000, which is about $15,000 in today's dollars. 182 were made of Rev 1, and they were handmade quite quickly to generate initial revenue. After this, the Rev 2 was released, of which 1,000 were made. The Rev 1 was made out of koa wood, which is a tree that grows on Hawaii and produces this beautiful, robust wood grain pattern. The Rev 2, assumingly able to produce more units, was replaced with walnut, but the instrument itself was quite reliable. A cassette storage was added for its patch memories and a general sense of reliability was restored with this version. There were also a few sub-models like the Model 2.0, 2.1, and 2.2. 
Fast forward to 1980 and the Prophet 5 became one of the most popular synthesizers to own. Sequential Circuit's name and reputation was practically invincible, but their instruments were still considered unstable. With less than 1300 units shipped, they were very hard to obtain. The reason for the Prophet's instabilities was to some extent due to the deficiencies of the SSM oscillators used, and the reason the synth itself was so rare was due to the manufacturing issues of those SSM oscillators. So Sequential decided to jump ship and switch over to Curtis CEM chips instead. This did, however, require a redesign in the power supply, the envelopes, DACs, and VCAs. One major problem pumped up, though. The SSM chip's weirdness is what largely was behind the richness of the Prophet's sound, and some of those dodgy electronics contributed to the beautifully analog sounding nature of the early Prophets. By the time the Revision 3 came along, some of that crispiness had gone, leaving a very reliable and impressive instrument to play, but with slightly less features in comparison to earlier models. This is the last version of the Prophet 5, Revision 3 in 1982, which had 80 patches and an instant editing feature introduced on Red. 3.1. This allowed you to turn a knob, which then immediately became active as its visible value. On previous versions, you had to press an edit button and then add to or subtract from the value in memory. Microtuning was also added, which was a rare feature in 1982. Then Rev 3.3 went from 40 to 120 patches. All right. <laughs> In the meantime, a rumor had been spreading that Sequential was designing a touch-sensitive synthesizer. Now that was a pretty big deal at the time, and except for the Polymoog and Yamaha CS80, or the very rare Yamaha GX1, there were no polyphonic synths that had pressure-sensitive keys. This is when the monstrous Prophet 10 came out, which we will discuss in a different video. Overall, the Prophet really was the first fully programmable polyphonic synthesizer and first musical instrument with an embedded microprocessor. About 6,000 units were produced between 1978 and 1984 with three revisions. In 2020, Sequential released a new version which contains the best of all revisions. The 2020 release revision 4 version also includes the Curtis analog VCOs and filters as well as the new 2140 low pass filters designed by Dave Rossum. It includes a rev switch which lets you choose between the two filter designs and allows you to adjust the filter envelope shape and response to match the original Prophet rev 1, 2, or 3. That sounds really cool and I could only dream of owning one <laughs> one day. It also includes 200 programs up from the original's 40, a vintage knob, a semi-weighted keyboard, and MIDI implementation. This new version sells for about $3,600, whereas vintage units sell for between eight and $10,000. Let me know if there's a synth you're interested in for next time. Farewell, my friends.